Hi. In this video, we're going to take LazyVim and add Tailwind support with auto completions, color previews, and code actions. So, let's get into a project that has Tailwind. And we'll open up Mason with the colon Mason command. And I'll search for Tailwind and install it with the letter I. And then I'll jump to the top. And you'll see that the Tailwind CSS language server was installed by Mason. Technically, we could start using the base functionality, but let's go and update our NeoVim config to reflect the same thing. I'm using LazyVim, so I'll add a new file to the plugins folder and call it tailwind.lua. Here, I'll paste in a snippet that will update the pre-configured nvim-lsp config options. In this case, I'm adding Tailwind CSS to the list of servers installed. The reason we did this is so that if we share our .files or set up a new computer, it'll automatically install the Tailwind language server without us having to go into Mason. Okay, let's switch back to our project that uses Tailwind and kick the tires. The index.tsx file has some Tailwind classes already in use, so let's open that. Now, there isn't much to see at this point. That'll come later. But if you start to type a new class name, you'll get autocomplete information from the Tailwind language server, and you could filter and navigate the list of options. You could also see a cool preview of the underlying CSS, which is pretty neat. Okay, let's now focus on adding a splash of color to our NeoVim buffer. We'll swap back to our config folder, open NeoVim, and navigate to the tailwind.lua file. Here we'll add another entry to our Lua table, and this time registering a new plugin called nvim-colorizer. On config, we'll set up the plugin to turn on the Tailwind option to colorize Tailwind classes. As a side note, if all you're doing is calling setup with some options, you can convert the syntax to something like this. Use the ops property to set the Lua table that should be passed to the setup function. Lazy.nvim will do the rest. And we'll let the style Lua formatter make things look pretty unsafe. Okay, let's switch back over to the other project, and you'll see that Lazy opens up and is installing our new colorizer plugin. Now if we open back up the index.tsx file, you'll see that the color tailwind classes are colored. There's the red 500 and the white. And we could change red to blue and see the color change as well. And we could try adding a background color of yellow. But you'll notice that the autocomplete does not show a preview of the color, which would be ideal. But we can adjust for that. But before we add color swatches to the autocomplete, please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. Also, I'd love to hear about other topics you might want to see in this series as I add more functionality to the base LazyVim installation. Okay, back to adding color. Let's save and quit and switch back to our config folder, open NeoVim and our tailwind.lua file. Here we'll paste another section to our Lua table. In this case, we're updating the existing nvim-cmp plugin and adding a new dependency that should autocall setup. And we'll update the options from what was previously set up in LazyVim. Here we'll override the formatting format function with the formatter that comes with the Tailwind CSS Colorize CMP plugin. This is what will add the color swatches to the autocomplete. So let's save our config and switch back to our project with the Tailwind classes. Lazy will auto install the Tailwind CSS colorizer CMP plugin. And then we'll open up the index.tsx file again. And everything looks the same as it was before, but let's surround create in a span and add a Tailwind text color class. Ooh, color swatches. Look at those red gradients. Oh, yeah. However, you might have noticed that we have lost something that we had before. We no longer have the icons before the types, constant, snippet, text, etc. That's because we overwrote the format function that LazyVim had provided for us. So let's go back again to our NeoVim configuration and get both formatters to work together. So we'll open up the tailwind.lua file one last time and replace the code inside the ops function with another snippet. Here we're grabbing off the format function provided by LazyVim and then creating our own function that first adds the icons, then calls the formatter from Tailwind CSS colorizer CMP that will combine the functionality from both of them. And now we'll save and close and switch back to our Tailwind project for the last time 
and open the index.tsx file. Now when we start to add a Tailwind class, we either see color swatches or we see an icon along with the type of entry, like a constant, color, etc. Another nice feature of the Tailwind language server is that it can detect problems and fix them. For example, there are squiggly lines under our two text colors. If we open up the Trouble plugin in LazyVim, you'll see the error that the colors apply the same CSS properties, and there's a conflict. The cool thing is that we could run a code action with leader CA and decide to delete Sky 500 or Red 600. We'll delete the red. And the code action fixes the problem for us. Pretty cool stuff. All right, well, that's all I wanted to share in this follow-up video about LazyVim. I plan to have other smaller videos like this to extend LazyVim with other features you might like. If LazyVim sounds interesting to you, feel free to check out my previous video where I set it up from scratch, kick the tires, and show how to extend it. Until next time, keep learning.